Hello, and welcome to another newsletter from Construction Programs and Results. I'm Michael Stone, and I will be sharing our newsletter with you. A couple of things I would like to comment on, comment on before we go to the newsletter. You are all aware of the conflict in Israel, and to that, the add to that the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine. And the TV, radio, and social media channels are full of doom and gloom. Lots and lots of things to distract you from the hard work of running your business. Yes, it is good to stay informed and even have opinions on world affairs, but it is not good to let all that monkey motion become a distraction to you, your family, or your employees. Here you must lead by example. Stay focused on the job at hand. Ask yourself if you have control over any of the things you are fretting about. If you don't have control over the issue, then put it on the back burner and get back to keeping your employees and your business focused on why you are in business, and that is to provide a service and make a profit doing it. How are your numbers for the year? Are you meeting your goals? If you are, good on you and your team. If not, why not? Job Costing East Job will give you the information that you need to make good decisions and focus on reaching your goals. You can read our two papers on review, planning, and goal setting on our website. Those that use those papers hit their goals and then some each year. It is well worth the effort to do the drill. And while you're on our website, be sure and check out our job costing software that we have. Low cost and simple, but it gets the job done. Now, our newsletter. Advice for new contractors. We received a note from a new remodeling firm in Canada with some questions. Since those questions are typical of those we often hear from new business owners, let me share them with you. They wrote, I just wanted to send you an email to ask your opinion, and we have, we've been in business now for nine months as a remodeling and a renovation business. Originally, we calculated a markup of 1.5 for our business, and upon reassessment, our sales, which have been steady, are only amounting to a projected 200,000 or 215,000 for our first year. Now, in my opinion, that's too low for survival but it's not out of line for new business. First year companies often struggle with sales and bring in less than half of what they need to stay in business long term. They need to push that up to 450 to 500,000 to provide enough income to pay their bills and survive in this business. Now the best way to do that is through a website. We all look online first when we need something and so do your potential clients. They'll find you with a well-designed website. If your website is put together properly, designed with SEO in mind, it should generate three to five leads a week. Your potential customers want to know all about you before they call, and your website is where you tell them what they want to know. Back to their note. We will need to increase our markup to 1.7 to meet our overhead costs. Do you think this is too big a jump? With the way inflation is going, I personally feel that it is what it is. We are a husband and wife small business and just want to get your take on the jump. I told them not to fuss about the markup. Charge what you need to stay in business. Again, it is what it is. Your potential client has no idea what your numbers are or what they should be. Based on feedback from 25 years of coaching clients, I told them they shouldn't lose many sales, if any, with that bump. They need to focus on quality, value, and the service and the service they provide, not low price. And they need to learn how to sell that. A low price is a surefire path right out of this business. Back to the note. Also, there is a construction labor shortage here in Canada. Not sure if you guys have the same issue in the U.S., other business owners are asking us to quote hourly jobs for them, where we will make no markup on the materials. 
Should we be quoting these with a much higher markup to compensate for that loss markup on materials? In my opinion, the labor shortage is one area where almost all industry associations have fallen short. Most associations have done little, if anything, to encourage young people to get involved in the trades. About the hourly rate, I would think twice about doing work for other contractors. They are essentially asking you to do piecework, working for hourly wages. If you're going to do it, price your work at your cost times two. If the GCs don't like your price, walk away. I know there's a need to increase sales, but let's not give away the farm. Their note continued. Our numbers are sales at 200000 for the year. Overhead is at 66000 This includes a 10% salary of $20,000. Profit is at 8% or $16,000. Looking at their numbers, their job costs are about 59%, which is right on the target. That leaves gross profit at 41% and net profit at 8%. Their numbers are good. They just aren't high enough. How can a couple live on 20000 a year? That is $1,666 total income for a month, and many mortgages are higher than that. However, their salary shouldn't be more than 8% of sales the first three or four years in business, so they definitely need to sell more. Let me finish their note. My husband is the only worker at a rate of $60 an hour, and we have an occasional hand that we pay $30 an hour, but charge him out at $60 an hour as well. Because he is just as experienced, he is retired and only helps on the odd large job. That rate from the owner is good for estimating purposes, but hopefully it isn't what they are charging other contractors. I also hope they aren't billing their jobs by the hour. It's okay for small handyman type projects, but if they want to start making money, they need to quote firm fixed prices for their work. The owner also needs to get off the jobs so they can focus more time on sales. These are typical small startup questions and comments, and the good thing is that they knew enough to ask questions. I suggested they read Markup and Profit Revisited as it covers the topics above and profitable sales to help increase their sales. Remember, you're in business to provide a service and make a profit doing it. You are not in business to drive around doing free estimates, nor give away your design assessment of the jobs to be built, nor do the labor on jobs so that other contractors can put the gravy in their pockets. Read, study, and learn. Those who do can succeed in this industry. Thanks again for watching, and may the profits be with you.